Let's take a look at the bakery, the analytical model that we use to try to evaluate rookies coming into the NFL, and let's find some sleepers that you should not only be rostering and throwing in your taxi squads, but potentially going out there and claiming waivers for, because now some of these guys are falling mm. out of the drafts onto waivers, and a good example of this is Johnny Wilson. And when you're looking at his bakery score compared to the other wide receivers in this bakery, and you're looking specifically at the tiers, the, the, Ryan has it organized all nice and neat because it, it does these tiers based on their scores. Let's look at this orange tier here. Luke, make sure this is up on the screen for me. Jalen McMillan, Malachi Corley, Jalen Polk, Jermaine Burton, Roman Wilson, Johnny Wilson, Luke McCaffrey, and Javon Baker. Of that list, the only one you see consistently falling out of the draft, out of the top 48 rookie picks, is Johnny Wilson. And Johnny Wilson is ranked above Luke McCaffrey, who got day two draft capital, and Javon Baker. Javon Baker being a guy who's going at the end of of the third, if not the mid third of rookie drafts right now in dynasty fantasy football. And so now you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, the, a lot of these guys aren't going to hit, you know, Johnny Wilson, he, you know, could be a bust, could not, whatever. Correct. A, absolutely. Those like are again, all these, dart are, throws? these are dart throws, but we're looking, we're looking for guided dart throws. And when you're talking about, and again, this is, objective because this is all based on data and it's an algorithm that takes into account all kinds of different metrics including draft capital there's, including there's including, no subjective grades here <laughs> no there's not we're not doing film grades or anything like that so with that and you're looking at what he has 8.36 wide receiver score in the bakery uh even looking at like all time and looking at where he falls there are some guys in this tier so first of all it's worth noting that roman wilson's a guy who's going into the second early third in rookie drafts mm-hmm. he's ranked back to back in the bakery with roman wilson jermaine burton is ranked three spots ahead of him. Guys in this tier that Jaylen have... Jalen Polk. Jalen Polk is too. Yeah. Guys in this tier that have gone on to hit. Cortland Sutton, Puka Nakua, Tank Dell recently. Uh, going down the list here. I mean, even guys that had slight value increases like Michael Wilson, Dontavion Wicks, Troy or, or Trey Palmer even for, for a stretch there towards the end of the season in 2023. Like that's five guys alone from last year who were drafted day three Romeo Dubs. and they increased in value. Romeo Dubs the, the year before that. So there's some hits here where yeah sure we're cherry picking but if you're going just back in recent history if you took a shot on some of those guys in this range just recently you had a pretty good shot at getting an increase in value and that's what we're looking for small value wins when you're looking at sleepers here you're not necessarily looking for the next Puka Nakua to be the next top six dynasty wide receiver. It's not, not going to happen. There's not another Puka. There's not another Puka. There's not, gonna not another Puka. <laughs> There's not another Puka. I don't know why. Ah. Is there another Puka ah. Avery? There's not another Puka. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, Small value wins. That's what this is about. And Johnny Wilson, given a situation going to the Philadelphia Eagles, like, yeah, is he ever going to be some dominant wide receiver that's playing alongside Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown? Nope. No, but uh, there's plenty of opportunity there's plenty to of be opportunity the wide receiver three, there, right? To be the wide receiver three. Uh-huh. There is no one past those two that they just paid big bucks to because guess what? They can't afford to pay anyone else. And he's a very, very unique wide receiver. He's six seven. Will they try to translate translate him to tight end? I don't know. Some people think that would be lazy of them to try. I think he could actually be a legitimate threat at wide receiver. And since he's so big, since he's so huge and such a unique route runner, maybe he'll provide some value in the red zone, especially, and you know, score some touchdowns. And touchdowns get two points. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see i mean again he would have to be the outlier of outliers to hit as a six-round draft pick but we are talking about that's what this video would be the outlier of outliers so this is 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 like this is no man's land like what are we going to do in no man's land deep deep sleepers like like they are so much sleepers that that, like they're almost putting me to sleep that's not hard to do oh that's not hard to do. The, oh, yeah. the next guy okay. on this list is actually getting drafted, at least. Tyron Tracy is... There's been a lot of buzz around Tyron Tracy. He goes to the New York Giants. Obviously, Devin Singletary is there under contract. They also have um, Eric Gray that they drafted last year, who mm-hmm. maybe will be able to carve out a role. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Tyron Tracy may be able to carve out a role, too. He went fifth round, just like Eric Gray did the previous season. And his production at Purdue was pretty nice. Yeah. Tyron Tracy, according to the bakery, thanks Ryan Bread, is ranked very, very similarly to Ray Davis, Isaiah Davis, Will Shipley, all guys that are being consistently drafted right now in your later rounds, in your rookie drafts, rounds three to four. Bucky Irving, Blake Corm and Bucky Irving are probably the two biggest guys that are in this same range, in this same large tier that I think are notable because they're going so much higher than someone like Tyron Tracy, who has just as good of an opportunity to carve a role into his respective offense as the guys like Irving and Coram do and guess what the big difference is between those guys Tyron Tracy has to compete with Singletary Blake Coram has to compete with 22 points per game Kyron Williams and Bucky Irving has to compete with running back four overall Rashad White I actually like my chances more with Tyron Tracy 
Oh, I if you're looking for immediate do. production and value increase over the course of his rookie season, I like my chances with Tyron Tracy. Will the value increase be as big over the long run as it could be for a guy like Blake Corm who went day two? Probably not. But again, you're getting him for so much cheaper. And we're trying to get small value wins here. And we're trying to get a guy who could potentially be someone who you can plug into your flex at the end of the year. Someone who's the next Puka, potentially. <laughs> the next Puka <laughs> running back. <laughs> we're so sarcastic. I know. <laughs> and again, like it's like it's just like I see dozens of people trying to find the next Puka. And I'm like, yeah, we need, that's make, gonna we need to make a video. We, about need, that. we do need to make a video about it, that. It but. is not about finding the next Puka. That's a that be, we'd be so mad in that video. People would hate us. <laughs> All right, the next guy on this list should surprise you because if you've been around long enough, you remember our one of our first hot takes or like takes when we started the podcast. Even it was like, oh, James Cook is only popular because he's Dalvin Cook's brother. Wrong, uh, obviously. But even just going off about Brendan Rice a couple weeks ago because it's like, what the heck? Well, this guy is also the son of an NFL legend, and that's Frank Gore Jr. He is, <laughs> believe it or not, he's Frank Gore's son. If you didn't pick up Ooh. on that, but uh, played. At- I was thinking of someone else. My bad. No, no, he was he's Frank Gore's <laughs> son. So obviously not playing at a power five school, uh playing at Southern Mississippi. But at the same time, Frank Gore, when you're looking at where he's at in the bakery and looking at the guys he's ranked next to, you, Isaac Gar- or Isaac Garendo, Jason McClellan, uh Rashina Ali, Kamani Vidal, he's actually ranked four spots higher than Kamani Vidal. And while Kamani Vidal did end up going to a situation where he could p- compete for a spot in a committee backfield, I would make the argument that Frank Gore Jr. landed in a spot like that as well. Mm-hmm. Because they drafted Ray Davis. And I think Ray Davis, including by us we've we've looked at it this way as well we've looked at ray davis and we've been like okay this is going to be the guy that goes in and he competes and he's going to be that goal line guy because remember james cook not getting a lot of red zone touches last year not getting a lot of red zone touches so they need ray davis to do that because you know they don't have whoever they've brought in to fill that role last couple years and so now it's like okay yeah it's ray davis but you do have to at least consider that there is a chance that Frank Gore Jr. could be that guy as well. Because if Frank Gore Jr. comes in and actually competes and beats out Ray Davis for that mm-hmm. spot in the committee and training camp, which, which, is, absolutely I, which possible. is possible, you do want to make sure that you have him on your roster or on your taxi because when he does, his price is going to go up. Not only is it going to go up because he won a spot or because he's making his way into a rotation from a running back standpoint, it's going to go up because of his name. His name and name... We We've seen this in Dynasty time and time again. It's stupid, but it's true. Name value does drive players' value. It does. The name brand stuff, it's a real thing. You've got to understand some people playing Dynasty. That's Frank Gore's son. That's Frank Gore's son. Now, that's what, that's the only reason Marvin Harrison Jr. Is, is, is popular is because of his dad. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be in the conversation, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's pretty bad. That's sarcasm, by the way. I, <laughs> I'm not put that out there because there would be somebody in the comments that'll be like, "Did this guy just really say?" <laughs> <laughs> but with Frank Gore Jr. Again, do we have high expectations for him? No. 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 In fact, like as of right now. Our expectations are nothing. The dude did not get drafted. Yeah, but if you're going to take a shot on a guy beating out someone who was drafted over him onto the same team, take a shot on a guy that you can get at a cheaper price for free. Like Isaiah Davis and Braylon Allen, both drafted to the same team on the Jets. One of them is probably going to get cut. Braylon Allen went fifth. Isaiah Davis went sixth. Or maybe they both went fifth. I honestly don't remember because guess what? (laughs) It didn't really matter. We, but but they're both being drafted in your rookie drafts, and chances are one of you is going to be the odd man out. You know how many times I've drafted one of the Jets running backs? Zero. Zero. I'm not touching. Same. I'm not You're touching. You're legit. Him. It's a dart throw as it is, but it's exactly. a dart throw split in half. You're throwing <laughs> half a dart, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's like it's not yes. even a. a 10% yeah. chance. It's like a 6%. I'd like, rather spend a waiver dollar on Frank Gore Jr. There <laughs> Seriously, you go. and he's Frank Gore's son. So that alone, right? (laughs) That is analysis. If I've ever heard, that's the only reason we need. So (laughs) next guy on this list that you're going to talk about is a guy you've already talked about pre-draft, but is still end up being a really good value. I know. Why, why can I not stop talking about Jacob Cowing? Um, Naturally, because you can't stop talking about him, he's going to go to the NFL, do absolutely nothing. Like that has to be his. Just career. like Puka Nakua last year, who I couldn't oh, stop okay, talking whatever, about. Whatever. This is the next Puka Nakua. <laughs> uh, no, Jacob nice. Cowing is a guy who I just really, really like the situation he's going into. How can you not like the situation called the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan? Like you can do anything in an offense with Kyle Shanahan. You now, now will Cowing be a special teams specialist for the rest of his life? Maybe. Um, will he be a wide receiver four or five on his offense? 
Maybe. Could he be eventually the wide receiver two or three in that offense? Maybe. Maybe. He was drafted fourth round. It's not that bad. And he had multiple very productive years at Arizona. He had 2,000 plus yard seasons and he had like just under 1,000 yards his last season as well. He was very productive his true junior year. I'm surprised he didn't go pro earlier. But what I like to see from Cowing was his versatility. He really, his yards per reception and yards per catch um, really fluctuated significantly. Like from 19 earlier in his career to nine, which makes me show that he's very capable of doing stuff before and after the catch deep deep threat and and, and things like that so I'm curious to see how Shanahan ends up utilizing him does that mean he'll he'll you know produce right out the gate I I really don't know but guess what Jacob Cowing is free just like Frank Gore Jr oftentimes he's not being drafted and he went in the fourth round guys there are people that are drafted in Brendan Rice went In the seventh round, barely got drafted. He's probably not going to make the team, and he's going in the third round, a round and a half above Jacob Cowing, who was taken in the fourth. And actually produced. Like, Jacob Cowing had an actual, successful, collegiate career. What else do you want to ask for someone that you're going to take a dart throw on in the late fourth round? I cannot stop drafting him. And guess what? If I'm wrong, I didn't lose out on anything. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Yeah, nobody's sending us death threats because we told him to draft Jacob Cowing or pick him up off waivers. Like that's yeah. this this isn't a death threat level guy. Yeah. So this is this is how we're playing though, and these are like it is. Th- these are the moves we're making in the dozens of mock or of rookie drafts that you and I have done. After like. We've been taking counting. And so. now, not to mention, we've been helping people in their rookie drafts too. And a lot of most people have already done their rookie drafts. Now they're turning their attention to like, what do I do with my team? Who do I pick up off of waivers? Things like that. We help people like that every single day over on the site. And if you haven't joined, you haven't gotten one of these beautiful team blueprints that looks like this. Wow, look at that blue team blueprint. It looks great and blue. That's what Whoa. that's what people are saying about it, word for word. And I think that alone should be the reason you come over and join us. Get a team blueprint. Get the trade calculator. Get Nathan and I's rankings. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. But not it, it is we the, the blueprint. We need to get. Uh, we I'm telling you, we still need to get a big one to hang it right there. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I gotta have Becca get that. Becca, get the blueprint. Get um, it. get it. Get the blueprint. Do it. But. You also get one-on-one advice from Nathan and I, and that's the most valuable thing. And yes, it's becoming harder to answer this many questions because there are 650 of you now, but we still want more (laughs) of you because this is what we want to do with our lives. So come join us, flockfantasy.com slash domain. You have to use code domain to get all of that I just talked about. You have to choose Mother Flocker Cheer as well. But going back to, you know, I did not think, I, I would not have envisioned after the draft, me putting somebody with third round draft capital on a sleeper on dart a- throw video with people who went undrafted. But there have been there. I mean, there have been multiple scenarios four round 12 team super flex drafts where we have seen Luke McCaffrey, brother of Christian McCaffrey running back for the 49ers. Which doesn't matter. I'm getting all the family guys today. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> no. Luke McCaffrey is going I'm sorry. undrafted in some... We are taking, at this point, almost a dozen, maybe two dozen people with worst draft capital over Luke McCaffrey. Is draft- Not to mention multiple people that will get cut from the team they were drafted by in the seventh round. Is draft capital everything? No, no. it's not everything. But it's not like it's the a lot situation of is terrible. It's not like there's not opportunity. Opportunity is not everything. Draft capital is not everything. Name is not everything. Situation is not everything. But when you have all of them, and at least a little bit, when it's like, have all well, of that's them? something. <laughs> All of them? All of them? When you got all of the things? <laughs> so Luke McCaffrey played at Rice. Uh, obviously not a, a super big school by any means. And so you, a lot of people are looking at that as a reason not to draft him as well. And a lot of people are looking at it as like, yeah, he went to the commanders. And a lot of times when you look at somebody who goes to a certain team, you know, you have players, you have teams with this reputation. The Titans, the Patriots have had this representa- re- reputation. The commanders absolutely deserve it as well. But he went in the third round. Yeah, There, there is, there mm-hmm. is a... In my opinion, a non-zero chance that he has some kind of role over the next two, three years. Because why would they have spent a third-round draft capital, a new coaching regime? G- 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 wow, hold on, a new coaching regime? Regime? Am, do I want to say regime? Regime? A new coaching regime well, that spent a, one of their first draft picks, one, a, a third-round draft pick on Luke McCaffrey. You don't think he's going to have a role at some point? You don't think you're going to see a flash of production from him? And again, when you're talking about value. That name will drive him up boards if he does mm-hmm. anything. Guys, I'm going to say it. 
I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. If you were ever to make the out of this world prediction that someone from a value perspective is going to be the next Puka Nakua, take the shot on the guy who went day two. The chances of them drastically increasing in value are literally doubled. It's still very small, but it's doubled compared to all the day three shots that you're taking. It's doubled. Just analytically, statistically. Analytically speaking. And again, the same range in, in the bakery compared to the other guys that we were talking about, like Puka Nakua, like Tank Dell, like Dontavion Wicks, like Michael Wilson. I mean, Luke McCaffrey is three or four times more likely, statistically speaking, not my opinion. Not he's, our opinion. He's three or four times more likely to hit than Troy Franklin is. Yes. And again, are we ranking Luke McCaffrey above Troy Franklin? No, we're not doing that. No. But we are saying analytically... Luke McCaffrey is a better pick, and that's when you kind of balance analytics and what actually is the truth around the situation. Right. But we've which done is why that. Troy Franklin should be going over Luke McCaffrey. Like we're exactly, we've we're, that. and we've established that. But we've also overcompensated because we're like Luke McCaffrey, Commanders. Mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised. I'm surprised that people are taking the brother of Chris McCaffrey. Not that that has anything to do with this, but just with the way that the dynasty community usually react, reacts to people like this, I'm surprised they're like kind of throwing him out the door. Yeah. Like, Re yeah, going to a team where, yeah. like, I would say Jahan Dotson's decent, but not a dominant wide receiver too. In fact, I wouldn't necessarily say they have a dominant wide receiver one. Terry McLaurin's really, really good as an NFL wide receiver, mm -hmm. but in terms of production, he hasn't been like just commanding all of that production. No, he doesn't steal everything. So I mean, Curtis Samuel was able to be productive there as the third even fourth option at times so. exactly so like th this is just an interesting one for people to just be like yeah yeah uh, luke mccaffrey I'm like well i mean i'll i'll take him yeah like, like somebody threw him in the trash i'm yeah, like this and, is good and again like don't ask us who we think is going to be the least productive person there if i were a betting man i'd say probably luke mccaffrey because i like ben sinnett more i like terry mcclure more i like Jahan dotson more i like air or I, I like austin eckler's receiving upside more that's four True. guys in front of luke mccaffrey but guess what I'm wrong a lot of times. <laughs> and when I'm getting Luke McCaffrey for free, <laughs> for three waiver dollars, guess what? I take all my worries. I pack him in a trash bag. I put oh, him on the gosh. curb. No, 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 I no, don't no, no, wave no, no. at the trash okay, man, okay. and I just walk away. Right. I just walk away and why I take McCaffrey for free. Why do you always go with the trash analogies? Like, can you find anything <laughs> It was else? a one time. It oh was a one time. Last guy, Eric Hall. It's, like it's like the baking a cake analogy. Like, everybody's like, dude, you're baking a cake. I, I saw Charles. Oh, no. It was Kenny Smith that did that. Anyways, isn't it? <laughs> I should use it's your, it. It's your turn to do the it last It is guy. my turn to do yeah. the last one. So Eric Hall is going to be our last guy here. And look. Again, just kind of another shot called. Some people are higher on Eric All than others. I've even seen Eric All be drafted in the fourth round here and there, kind of towards the second half of the fourth round. You can absolutely realistically get him off waivers, though. We're just hoping for another Hayden Hurst situation eventually in Cincinnati. Now that Tyler Boyd is gone, Jermaine Burton is in. He'll probably need a year of development. So is Eric All, but hey, one of those guys is probably going to get a decent amount of targets down the line, and Eric All could absolutely be one of those guys. They tried the Irv Smith experiment. It didn't work out. It hasn't worked out for anyone ever, and <laughs> they decided to go draft Eric All, I believe, in the third round. So he's someone who, when you're looking at the bakery, the tight end bakery, thanks, up. Ryan Bread. So many shout-outs. So many so shout-outs. Shout we made we him. made Ryan famous. Yeah. We're interviewing people He's this actually, week, and people are like, "Oh yeah, Ryan Bread." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." From a analytical perspective on the bakery, Eric All is actually ranked back to back with Irv Smith as a prospect, which is ironic because they tried the Eric the, or the Irv Smith experiment and it didn't work. Johnu Smith been very successful, had some value increase. Isaiah Likely, the love affair that Dynasty people have with Isaiah Likely never ceases to amaze me, but you know what it does? It gives me hope for Eric Gold to increase in value and actually have some value for him, for you to capitalize, get a small value win, move off of him, and get an actual you know meaningful asset in I'll the future. Do, I'll be lazy here. I'll helmet scout. Okay. He went to Iowa. That's all the reason I need <laughs> to take Eric Gold, right? Like, I yeah. mean... How many Iowa tight ends are okay. good in the NFL today? Every, a lot of them. Most of them. Almost every single one of them. <laughs> I mean, even last year, yeah. yeah it's, Cole Komet in the same range, Dawson Knox. I'm loving this, man. Uh, yeah, I, no, I think it's definitely. This is very yeah. good. I mean, how many of these guys have eventually at some point increased in value and held value so that you can actually have, you, you know, trading leverage when you're moving them as an asset? I like Eric all in the fourth round better than I like Jatavian Sanders going in the fourth round. I just do. I like him better than I like Brendan Rice in the third. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's going to, man, oof. we're never going to get over that, are we? Uh -uh. We're, gonna, we're butthurt about no, that one. All right, no. make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. And then also flockfantasy.com slash domain. Use code domain. Choose them on a flagger tier. Get a team blue 
blueprint. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for joining us. See you later.